Hi, I'm Kate Davis. I am head teacher at Ashley School in Cotgrave in Nottinghamshire, which is a special school. Um, I've also taught in uh, similar schools uh, um, within the area um, now for over 25 years. Um, and I've been a classroom teacher for the majority of that time and uh, mostly working with children and young people with um, profound and multiple learning difficulties or you know children working at those earliest developmental levels so hopefully it means uh, it equips me to answer the question that Joe posed which was how can I stop the chat um, because I have worked in classrooms working with lots of other adults and really this question doesn't just allude to that the, the chat that happens in the classroom that isn't purposeful or focusing on what you want to do but also about how you work with other adults in the classroom um, and some of the challenges that that poses um, and we know this is an issue um, it was um, across the board really so it was something that uh, Jo felt uh, would be important to be included um, uh, there was uh, a question posed in uh, uh, the P one of the PMLD forums uh, around the issues of having too many adults in the classroom. Lots of people were very jealous, um, but there are lots of people in and out of our classrooms, um, our PMLD classrooms. Um, so we know it's an issue because it was something that people said challenged them as well, that this person wasn't on their own. But also lots of great strategies and ideas came out of that too. Um, so why is the chat the problem? I suppose the chat is the problem when it isn't about what we're doing at the time. Now, if we're working in classes of children with PMLD, it's unlikely to be them who are doing the chatting. Um, therefore, a lot of the chatting is happening between the adults. It's great to have a positive work environment with great friendships and camaraderie. That's brilliant. But actually, when it impedes the learning, then we need to address it. Um, for lots of our children, actually, if they have PMLD, uh, not only are they the ones not doing the chatting, but also they struggle to be able to focus um, on just one thing. So we know that their senses are impeded. We know that cognitively um, processing will be really difficult. Therefore, if there's sound and noise that's happening around that isn't to do with what they're trying to focus on, or isn't to do with what you know they're trying to get their bodies to do and it's distracting them then it's really impeding the learning uh, so we need to address that um, also you know we're talking about working with other adults um, and it it's it's how we use other adults in our classrooms um, to create a better learning environment but also as teachers to make to make our, our jobs easier, um, you know, and, and, and to, and to maximise the learning at all time. Um, one of the thing that we're, things that I'm going to talk about a little bit later on is that that Velcroing that happens sometimes as well with having lots of adults in the classroom. Um, you know, people are doing it with the best of intentions sometimes, but um, when adults are so stuck to a child um, because they feel they have to be one-to-one -one all the time. There are times that it has to happen, but that actually because of that, um, uh, children don't get to respond as independently as, uh, as they might want to. Um, so they've either got an adult next to them or in front of them. So it doesn't give them that opportunity to reach out, notice something in the difference or, or call for some kind of help. Um, so hopefully the strategies that um, we're going to talk about um, to stop the chat also um, enables us to um, get the best out of the adults in the classroom full stop. And I also just don't want to just talk to the teachers um, or those leading in those classrooms, but I also want to talk to those su support staff as well um, and being mindful of your contribution um to uh, the teaching and learning honestly i have observed lessons and lessons can be enlivened and um, made truly outstanding by the contribution of the whole teaching team um, or it can fall flat um, and it can impede learning as well 
often I think some support staff feel that they are almost anonymous, especially in that kind of formal and um, observation when, uh, you know, you think it's the teacher that's being observed, but it's everybody that's being observed. And it's really important that you, you contribute to that as well. And I think I'd really like you to think about, well, how can I, as I'm talking, how can I help um, with this as well? Because uh, we're all there to, to, to enable children's learning. Um, so yeah, the classroom is, we're in the classroom and our children have an entitlement to learn. Uh, they have an entitlement to the best education that we can provide for them. There are lots of other functions that happen that are really important for children with PMLD um, to meet their physical needs, their medical needs, um, uh, and they're really important. They're vital that children are ready to learn. Um, but actually, as a teacher, my role is to ensure that that, that, that child is receiving the best education um, to meet their needs and meet their aspirations. Um, so I need to start talking about how, how we can actually stop it. So what are the ideas that I've used? Um, actually, this is the hard bit. You are the teachers. Um, you are the leader in that class. And actually, you set the expectations, um, whatever they may be. Um, you need to hold the adults that you're working with to account. Working with other adults is really daunting. I remember 25 years ago, stepping into a classroom, having trained as a secondary school history teacher, um, which, you know, has stood me in good stead, obviously, you know. Um, and, you know, having never worked with children with PMLD before, that was daunting enough. But actually working with the adults was quite overwhelming and really daunting. Um, and it's, you know, especially for new ch teachers, it's really challenging and it continues to, to be so. Actually holding other adults to account when you're trying to build relationships and friendships as well is really, really hard. There are lots of strategies that you can use um, to ensure that, you know, to prepare you for that and to support you to do that. But just being mindful that we are all there to, um, we are paid to do our job um, and we need to challenge each other in a an adult and a professional way. Um, but it needs to be done um, because our job is to enable learning and if we're not enabling learning and if we're not supporting and not adhering to what 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 the teacher has set out for us um we need to be challenged on that it's hard it is really difficult um and make sure that you access support to do that as well you have senior leaders that can support you to do that um it's not just their job to do it it's also your job to do it as the teacher um, but it does need to be done and also support staff. If you have agreed on, you know, expectations for your class, um, you need to, to ensure that you're adhering to it, but also, you know, challenging your colleagues as well to adhere to it. And also all those other people that come in, you know, this isn't, um, you know, our classroom environments aren't just our teaching staff. We also have uh, health staff that might come in and other therapists that may come into the classroom. So actually make sure that you're doing your job as well to ensure that, that you're holding those um, other people to account so that, 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 you know, what you've agreed as a class team um, to what will enable learning um, is adhered to by everybody. And that's not just the class teacher's job. Um, and we were talking about the chatting. Um, so why does it happen? Yet yeah, one, you've got lots of adults in the classroom. Two, you have probably created a great uh, classroom environment. Everybody gets on. Sometimes as well, our children with PMLD um, can switch off. Um, lots of reasons, medical reasons, um, disengagement, overwhelm. And it's really important that, you know, when we look at what if the chat is happening or if adults aren't supporting and enabling learning why is it happening so and that we address those issues so if if children are struggling to stay awake and engaged 
um, it's really important that we, we, we find out the reasons why um, also. Um, now, I know that this, this, I haven't, this isn't a finite list um, of things and, and, and hopefully in thinking through, you know your class, you know your staff team, you know your pupils, you know you um as well and hopefully i know that you you will come up with lots of ideas as I, as i'm talking um but it's really really important that you you plan this you need to plan your day and you need to plan your time you need to plan what the expectations are um you need to know what that's going to look like there are lots of functions and things that need to happen to make sure that the children in PMLD classrooms are healthy, that they're ready to learn um, and that, you know, all their physio and OT needs are being met and they're supported to go to the bathroom, um, they're supported to be ready to learn. All these things need to happen, but you need to plan it so that you have that kind of wonderful bubble of that lesson time and um, that that is protected. It's really hard. Stuff happens. I know stuff will happen all the time, but you need to plan well to make sure that you have that quality time for learning and everybody understands what that is and what that expectation is too. Um, Working in a PMLD classroom is really hard work. People think, well, you know, they, they're not going to run off. But actually bringing that energy in and bringing that positivity in and keeping to those standards that you expect is hard work. It should be and it will be. And it's hard work for everybody. Um, so how can you actually um, maximise the adults in your classroom you have a wonderful resource uh, in all those adults in your classroom so you know you know that the learning that you're going to create and the opportunities for learning that you're going to create need to be sensorily big and actually you have a huge brilliant resource in the adults in your class and almost getting them off their chairs, off their seats, off to sitting velcroed next to, some, next to somebody is really important. And actually it enables better learning as well. If you think that you can use those staff as actors, um, I remember I, we did a uh, Macbeth story and you know three of the support staff members were, were the witches um, and they did a brilliant job. Um, you know, it isn't just the teacher being the actor and leading, you know, that everybody sat there watching. All the staff need to be the actors. Also think about how um, those adults can maybe create soundscapes, for example. You know, you might not, if you want to create the sound of the sea, if you've got five adults in your classroom together, you can create quite a responsive soundscape that, you know, responds to um, what's happening in the classroom in an improvisational way. Um, you can create effects together. So really, they need to be the actors, they need to be the soundscape, they need to um, be the people making things happen and creating things so that children can notice um, in the distance, potentially. Um, it's really important that you use the adults to record and observe. We use evidence for learning at Ashley. Um, so we use photographs and we use video and we annotate that as well to describe what's happening. Um, uh, but use your staff um, to record um, things like that. You may have different ways of recording. It may just be that you're writing and noticing what's happening. Um, but you need to empower people to be able to do that as well, um, because actually that gives you as well that rich learning journey um, that that child or young person is is going along to. So that's another strategy that you can use. Again, you need to plan plan using people um, in ways that enable to maximise learning to to um, help you with your job as well sometimes so if you want fewer people in your classroom because actually whatever session that you're doing you just need fewer people in 
um, it it might be that you want them to go elsewhere and do something else and I think that's actually okay too um, as long as it's planned people understand what it is that they're doing and why and they're capable of doing that on their own and that it, it, it supports um, the teaching and learning that's happening um, you also need to allow allow the chat to happen and give give opportunities for for people to have those conversations to build those relationships but in a way that actually includes the children because a lot of the chat happens above pupils it doesn't it isn't respectful it's not to them it's to each other um, and it's, it excludes um, the children and the young people often but um, one thing that we've done is actually have that snack time where um, the pupils might have their news either on a switch um, a step by step switch is a great way of doing that um, uh, or just a simple Big Mac as well or things that you know the parents have shared in the diary that are appropriate obviously but also it gives adults a, uh, a chance to share their bits of news as well um, but done in a way that includes the pupils possibly in the way that makes it really exciting um, you know so that you have that chance to be overtly chatting actually and that you know it 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 it's something inclusive um you need to remember that you are the children's most powerful ally and advocate um and you have a responsibility to actually make that learning happen and you have a responsibility to ensure that your expectations are adhered to and if you want somebody to t stop talking, you need to tell them to stop talking sometimes, um, as difficult as that can be. Um, but you know, you are the person that, that will lead and enable that to happen. Um, and actually think positively on this wonderful that resource that you have in your classroom, all these people who can create exciting learning opportunities that can can observe um, and, and, and um, you know record the learning that's happening or as well prepare resources and all of those other things that um that they might be able to do um so hopefully that's been helpful and will give you some ideas um uh to um, put into practice in your classrooms